is Hasib Ahmed. Over the last 10 years, I've developed an artistic practice that is heavily um, invested in creating transdisciplinary collaborations between the sciences, engineering, humanities, the arts. I've been working a lot with and fluid dynamics related to wind and air, but in this case I'm working with water. For me what became important is to really emphasize this idea that water itself is a kind of closed loop. Uh, it's a system that really ties us all together. Um, and that's especially important when we think about it in terms of um, pharmaceutical pollution. So what I really would like to do is to speak about the kind of social desire that we have that initiates the social investment into certain pharmaceutical development. For example, contraceptives offer the uh, unprecedented amounts of freedom, uh, especially for women in relation to reproductive rights. But at the same time, they're having this inadvertent effect of creating a uh, society of, of, of female fish, let's say. And for me, what's very interesting too is like, well, how does that also play into certain mythological narratives? And so in both of the artworks which I'm presenting, I'm drawing from mythology and historical stories in order to uh, help us better understand the present or tr create a narrative for the present. I think that what was really interesting is that this is a, a extremely important topic that we are largely unaware of. It was an opportunity to really address this. It was also an opportunity to work closely with experts who are specialists in, in, in both pharmaceuticals and water treatment. And for me, it's important that the artwork is not only describing the issues, the artwork actually contains the actual phenomena itself. So in the artworks, there are actual pharmaceuticals in the water. There are filtration processes being implemented. There's an attempt to build a metaphor to address this like, complex problem from the ground up. Normally when we ingest uh, pharmaceuticals medication, um, it's a very personal uh, act. And so we never really think about the cumulative effect of the decisions that each of us are making in relationship with pharmaceuticals. I think that what might happen is that uh, there's a new sensitivity that is created um, around our relationship to our own bodies, our relationship to water itself. And it's it's a, a question about prioritization between uh, ourselves and the world that we inhabit, knowing that, well, we are also part of this world. So how do we, how do our individual choices then affect it, let's say. Um, so I, I hope that that's something that um, people take away from the work. I mean, I feel like I could keep on working on this topic for the next um, 10 years or more, I would say quite quite a long time. And I think the question just becomes more and more intense, which I experienced this summer as we had the worst drought in 700 years, which also uh, concentrated the amount of uh, pollutants, especially pharmaceutical pollutants in water. So we know that water scarcity will continue to become a much more critical concern. And um, it's something that uh, motivates me to continue to work on the on these pieces